This is Max. In case you're tuning in for the first time, let me catch you up. You see, the other day my kooky Aunt Murgatroyd sent my friend Molly and I a mysterious package. She said it was a time machine. We didn't believe her at first. Boy, were we wrong. Then she recruited us to be part of a secret order of problem solvers who travel through time and space solving riddles and puzzles created by the troublesome trolls. They're like the bad guys. Anyway, now every day is one big adventure as Molly and I use math and logic to try and solve mysteries about true histories. I gotta say, since we joined the Problem Solvers, it's like we're leading a double life. Because we can't tell anyone? Because we have our home and school life, and then we have our go-back-in-time life. But I see your point, too. We're leading a triple life. Speaking of, I finally learned why 789. Oh, yeah? It wanted to eat three square meals. (laughs) Get it? Three squared equals nine meals? See what I did there? That joke would truly be awful in any of our three lives. I thought it was pretty punny. Get it? Oh, wow. What has gotten into you today? I don't know. I'm just feeling really good. Like, nothing could get me down. Hey, Max. I need to talk to you. Oh. Hey, Brad. Don't hey, Brad, me. I know it was you who hid that speaker in my backpack. Speaker? Backpack? Stop playing dumb. I'm not playing. Um... You might want to rephrase that, Max. I just meant I didn't do whatever you're accusing me of. You hid a tiny speaker in my backpack and played Baby Shark over and over again. Mrs. Walsh gave me detention for disrupting class. Like I want to hear that stupid song a hundred (laughs) times. I'm not saying I did it, but whoever did is mad funny. Hey, are those donuts? Yeah, but not for you. Come on! Just one? Nope. Tell you what. I'll bet you for them. You put up one jelly donut, and I'll bet my pants. You win. I'll walk around all day in my underwear. What's the bet? I bet that I can add seven to six and get one. Oh, boy. Six plus seven gives you one? I'll take that bet. Thought you might. Ready? See the old clock in the tower with the hands? Yeah. See the six at the bottom? Yeah. Okay, now add seven to it. You get seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. I'll take my donut now. Thanks. What? No way. That's cheating. No, it isn't. A bet's a bet, my friend. Fine, take it. But we're not friends, and I will get you back. Look forward to it. What a goober. He's no match for me. Want a bite of my jelly donut? I'm good. Great. More for me. Yuck! That isn't jelly. It's filled with ketchup. (laughs) Yep. Brad is no match for you, all right. Ow! I just got bonked in the head with a paper airplane. (laughs) I wonder if it's Katrina. Actually, it's a message from Aunt Murgatroyd. Yep, it looks like another mystery history mission. Great. I can't miss my history test. I even studied for it. Duh. We can do a mission and return right back to this time, remember? Oh. Right. Duh. The message says, Tiles on the wall. Pythagoras must see them, otherwise there'll be no theorem. And then there's a code to enter into the time machine. Pythagoras? Theorem? Pythagoras was an ancient Greek philosopher who created a theorem for finding the length of the sides of a right triangle. It's used in math, architecture, navigation, everywhere, really. He saw math, especially geometry, as the hidden language of the universe. Like a code behind everything in nature and music. It was mystical for him. Interesting. Here. Let me see the code. Uh, Max, did you just smear ketchup on the code? Whoops. Oh, no. The ketchup smudged one of the code numbers on the page. I can't read it. So, what do we do? Well, it's a numbered sequence. 
Maybe there's a pattern we can figure out. It goes two, five, nine, 14, 20, ketchup stain, 35. Two, five, nine, 14, 20, ketchup stain, 35. Let's see. Well, the numbers aren't doubling. Nope. It's got to be something else. Uh, beats me. I don't think I could solve this in three lifetimes. Hey, that's it. It is? If you add three to two, you get five. Right. But the next number is nine. Adding three to five only gets you eight. Yeah, but if you add four to five, you get nine. Add five to nine, you get 14. Add six to 14, you get 20. Which means... You add 7 to 20 and get... 27. 27 is the ketchup number. And just to make sure, 8 plus 27 equals... 35. Nice work, problem solver Molly. Thanks, problem causer Max. I know, I deserve that. Come on, let's enter the code and go say Pythagoras' hidden language of the universe. <laughs> Whoa, where are we? When are we? According to the coordinates, we're in 6th century Greece, the island of Samios, to be precise. If I'm not mistaken, we should find Pythagoras in the palace hall. Legend has it, Pythagoras studied the triangular tiles in the palace while he was bored, and pictured squares within the tiling. He recognized that adding the area of the squares in the side lengths was equal to the square in the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse? Hypotenuse? That's the long side of the triangle? From his observation, Pythagoras figured out the same would be true for the right triangles of unequal side lengths. And voila, a theorem was born. Lying down on that bench. That must be Pythagoras. Excuse me, Mr. Pythagoras. Hmm, yes, that's me. Wow, it is such a pleasure to meet you. I'm Molly, and this is Max. What you doing, Pi? Oh, I'm just waiting to talk to the priestess. I want to show her my latest joke invention, the greedy cup. Greedy cup? What's that? This. Um, it looks like a cup. Oh, it is a cup. Okay, what's so special about it? You see, when you... Max, hold the greedy cup. Molly, can you grab that hydria? It's the fancy-looking pot filled with water. Got it. Now, pour water from the hydria into the greedy cup, up to the gold line. Keep going. Okay, Max, take a sip. Now, Molly, why don't you refill it? But this time... Fill it above the gold line. Okay. Ah! I'm all wet! It drained out the bottom! (laughs) (laughs) Yep, there's a hidden chamber. If someone is greedy and pours too much water, they get all wet. Whoa! The ancient Greeks like to play pranks too? That's savage. Mr. Pythagoras, I heard this palace had some interesting triangle-shaped tiles, but I'm not seeing any. Oh. I don't know. Look around. There's no triangles anywhere. The walls, the floors, ceiling, nothing. Uh Uh-oh. Do you think you know who is behind it? Maybe. If the troublemaking trolls sabotaged the palace and stole all the tiles, no tiles equals no theorem. Then everything we know about right triangles would be wrong. It would be chaos. Whoops. Did you say chaos? As a mathematician, I'm not a fan. Can I ask you something, Pi? Aren't you bored staring at blank walls? A little, but I do have my Switch. They have Nintendo Switches in ancient Greece? Ancient? (laughs) No, silly boy. I have a toy with me now. Look, you can flip this little lever back and forth and it makes a clicking noise. Oh, you meant an actual Switch. Fun. I guess. Hey, Max, look. There's a doorway over there blocked by a curtain. Maybe the triangle tiles are in there. Only one way to find out. Come on, Pi. Let's see what's over here. Sure. Let's do it. 
careful, Max. I'm trying. There's construction junk all over this place. Yes, they're redecorating. I think they're going for ionic columns or Doric. What's the difference? I'm not sure. It's all Greek to me. Oh boy, they like bad jokes here too. This is my kind of place. <laughs> this curtain is blocking off the whole wall. I bet the tiles are behind it. Let's yank it down. Hey, look, up there. There's a pulley on the walkway above the door frame. I bet it lifts the curtain. I bet you're right, but the rope for the pulley has been cut. Mm-hmm, more sabotage. That's okay. I'll just climb up like Spider-Man. Ow, I gotta start taking gym class more seriously. Wait, this section of the wall is set back a bit like a giant rectangle. We can grab one of those boards, rest it in one corner, then climb it like a ramp to the top of the other corner. Then we can reach the pulley. Yes, but we have to find the right length board. I don't know if we have time to try all the ones laying around here. Maybe we don't have to. Look, each stone in the palace looks like it's one foot across. Now look at the entryway. It has six stones across the bottom and eight stones high. Okay, so it's six feet across at the base and its height is eight feet. So what? Since we know the base and we know the height and we know the corner is 90 degrees, you know, a right angle, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem. My what? Um, a special math formula used to find the length of the long side of a right triangle. Oh, are they named it after me? <laughs> the glory. Uh, yeah, kinda. The theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's make a equal to six. B can be equal to eight, which means six squared plus eight squared equals c squared. Any number squared is that number multiplied by itself. So six squared is like saying six times six is... 36! And eight squared is... 64! Right. That gives us 36 plus 64 equals C squared. 36 plus 64 equals 100. So 100 equals C squared. To figure that out, we need the square root of 100. Ah, the square root of a number is whatever number times itself gives you the original number. In this case, what number times itself equals 100? Well, we just said 8 times 8 equals 64, and 9 times 9 equals 81, but 10 times 10 equals... 100! Exactly! So the square root of 100 is 10, which means the long part of the triangle is 10 feet. Which is the length of the board we need to climb up. Hi! Look for a board that is 10 feet long. You can hold it up against the wall. It should be 10 stones long. Ah, got one right here. Awesome. Stick inside this part of the wall on a diagonal. A perfect fit. It makes a right triangle that is 6 feet by 8 feet by 10 feet, which is also known as a Pythagorean triple. My triple? Yeah. It's a way of knowing a triangle is a right triangle just by the length of the sides. The most common one is 3, 4, 5, but 6, 8, 10 is one too. Some say the Egyptians knotted ropes at the 3, 4, and 5 foot mark to help them form right angles, which they then used to make perfect squares to build the pyramids. I got lost the last time I visited the pyramids, but I wouldn't admit it. Why not? Because I was in denial. Ugh. You guys are both terrible. Hey, Pi! Do you know why 789? Max, no, we are on a mission. Right, sorry. Here I go. I found the pulley handle. I'll just give it a crank. Look, it's a whole wall of right triangles. Yeah, pretty neat. Um, Pythagoras, what do you think? Um, Pi, you okay over there? <laughs> Yes, yes, I see it. I really see it. All the triangle tiles, together they are forming squares with right angles. As if you are making a right triangle out of three squares. It means you can figure out... Oh, what was that equation you used, Molly? I forget, but I'm pretty sure you got it from here. Yeah, our work here is done. Nice meeting you, Pi. Bye, Mr. Pythagoras. Ah, home sweet home.
Well done, my friend. Yeah, you too. Max! Molly! I didn't hear you come in. Can I get you something to drink? I'm good, thanks. I'll take some iced tea. You can use this cup, just don't fill it over the gold line. <gasps> hey, is that Pythagoras' greedy cup? Yep, I can't wait to let Brad Baxter use it. Oh, wow. This episode of Mysteries About True Histories was written by Adam Markowitz and voiced by Dexter Danger Mayo, Molly Smith, Cooper Alexander, Leslie Higgins, and Jonathan Regier. Original music by Brian Suarez. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. The executive producers are Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert from Atomic Entertainment, and Jed Baker and Agaranish A. Palmer from Starglow Media. Mysteries About True Histories is a Starglow Media and Atomic Entertainment production. Grown-ups, looking for ad-free audio fun for the whole family? Subscribe to Starglow Plus on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts. Learn more at starglowmedia.com slash subscribe. Catch you on the next Mysteries About True Histories. Mysteries About True Histories.